Page four of normal distribution, we're going to talk a little bit about the standard normal distribution or Z distribution, which we touched on a little bit during the investigation. So um, normally the normally ha 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 normally the, the we use um, any kind of mu and sigma like on the last page we had different mu's and sigmas right um, those are called x distributions the z distribution if you remember is a special normal distribution where instead of having seventy and seventy four and sixty six as our x uh, uh, values on the um, x uh, axis, we're going to put just zero in the middle and one and negative one around it. And so the mean value is going to be exactly zero and the standard deviation is, is, is going to be exactly one. That's, that is the z distribution as opposed to an x distribution. So every normal x distribution can be transformed into a standard normal or z distribution using the transformation z equals x minus mu divided by sigma. Okay, so if you can imagine, like, let's say that you had a number line, and in the middle you had 70, and each standard deviation uh, interval was uh, 4, and you had 66 and 74 on either side, right? How could you transform this distribution into this distribution? Well, you can see that, like, basically, you need to do two things, right? One is that the 70 value needs to be uh, migrated to 0, right? So at some point you need to kind of subtract 70 from everything, right? But besides that, you also need to do some kind of compression because look at the width of this. The, you know, one standard deviation width is four and here one standard deviation width is one. So in addition to subtracting 70 so that you can center the distribution around zero instead of 70, you also need to do some kind of horizontal compression to it. Do you remember when you have horizontal compression and you have a horizontal translation? It looked kind of like this in the transformations chapter. So it's pretty pretty much what we're doing. So instead of subtracting C, we're going to subtract mu, which is the horizontal translation amount that we're going to that we're going to do. And then instead of multiplying by B, we're going to divide by sigma, which is, you know, pretty much the same thing. It's just that remember B was a factor of horizontal compression and sigma is actually a factor of horizontal stretch. Um, so we're, we're going to put it in the denominator. Okay. So, um, the Z transformation is we're going to take our X value and we're going to subtract off the mu to center it at zero. And then we are going to do a horizontal compression by a factor of sigma. Okay. All right. So a Z distribution has a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. In fact, the Z distribution is a normal distribution with a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. Okay. Compare the normal X distribution probability density function with the Z distribution probability distribution function. Highlight the common elements. Okay, and the x distribution always has a unique height and width depending on mu and sigma, right? The z distribution, however, always has the same dimensions. Okay, so let's take a look at the PDF function. So this one here, this one here is the uh, x distribution, and this one here is the z distribution, as you can see from the, the internal variable here. And you can see that, like, basically what happens is, if you plug in sigma equals one and mu equals zero, do you see how this being zero and this being one and this being one, basically it really simplifies the function. And then of course, we're also gonna change the X to a Z. And so now do you see the negative one half is still there, right? But instead of having X minus mu divided by sigma squared, now we just have a very simple Z squared, right? Because the mu is zero and the sigma is one. And then of course, since the sigma is one, instead of having sigma in the denominator here, all we have is a square root of two pi. So you can kind of see why the Z distribution PDF function is much easier, much simpler, right? Because the mu is zero and the sigma is one. All right. Okay. Um, 
Why do you imagine that about 20 years ago the z transformation was always used to transform the x variable into the z variable in order to evaluate a probability? Um, I talked about this a little bit in the investigation. So um, when we didn't have the calculator uh, to do norm CDF for us, imagine that we used a lookup table to do norm CDF instead of typing this in. How many lookup tables would you need if you had lookup tables for every single different mu and sigma? Almost infinitely many, okay? So what we did instead is we had one lookup table with a standard deviation of one and a mu, mu value of, of zero, and, and we just used that one single table. And then whenever we looked up something in the table, we needed to take our x variable and transform it using, you know, this, uh, um, uh, transformation so that we could look it up and the reason why is because we didn't have computers right no computers so we had to use a paper table in the back of the book so the only table we had was mu equals zero and sigma equals one so we had to transform everything to that um, domain if a z-score of a data x is 1.84, then what is the position of x in terms of mean and standard deviation? Since the z-axis is so standardized, we actually can call it the z-score. And if you have a z-score of 1.84, then you can kind of see that, oh, what that means is it is between a uh, z-score of 1 and 2, which means you're basically... Um, around here, right? So what does that mean? You are more than one sigma to the right, but less than two sigma to the right. Okay, so like you can, if you already know your z-score of 1.84, you you can draw it pretty easily on the uh, normal distribution diagram, and you can also, without drawing it, already know that it's between plus one sigma to the right or uh, and two two sigma to the right. It's It's between the two right okay so we know that it's on the right side of the distribution and we know it is plus one sigma uh, it's between plus one sigma and plus two sigma to the right okay um, okay the table shows Emma's mid-year exam results. The exam results for each subject are normally distributed with the mean mu and standard deviation sigma shown in the table. Um, this is uh, a pretty um, efficient way to not only know how you did on an exam, but relative to the rest of the class. I, I've heard that this is like really common in Jap Japanese high schools. They like actually give scores that are like sigma scores. Um, so it really matters where you are with reference to the rest of the class. It's not something that we do too much, um, but in the end, you know, when you do do SAT and when you do um, IB or um, um, vestibular, R, of course it matters the, how many people you're ahead of because, you know, only the top people get into that college or whatever. Okay, so um, notice that each one of these exams has a completely different mean and a completely different standard deviation. So, you know, just by looking at the scores, you might think, oh, 84, that's, uh, that's the best score in geography and maths. But, you know, it's like, but how did everybody else do? And the way you can figure out where you are relative to the rest of people is looking at the mean and the standard deviation um, and figuring out where you are in the normal distribution. And that is exactly what a z-score does. Uh, for example, if I was to draw the drawing of English, I have 40 in the middle and then it jumps by like 4.4, right? So it'd be like, this would be about 44 and this would be about 48. So if you get a 48 and that would be around here, right? So you can see that like, oh, actually, like I'm two standard deviations over. Uh, and in z-score, that would be about plus two, right? And so um, that seems pretty good, right? Because like from what we know, uh, that means that there's only 2.5% of the people ahead of you using 68, 95, 99. So that's, that's really good, right? Okay, so let's figure out what the z-scores are for each one of these subjects. I kind of did that for English by drawing a picture, 
But how would we do that with a little bit better precision? Um, we can just use the formula that we uh, just looked at here, x minus mu divided by sigma. Okay, so let's write that formula down here. We're going to use that formula. So uh, z equals x minus mu divided by sigma. Um, so in the case of English, what we're going to do, English, we're going to have uh, the z of English is equal to uh, x, which is Emma's score, 48, minus mu, which is 40, divided by 4.4. So that would be 8 divided by 4.4. Let's use the calculator to figure what that would be. 8 divided by 4.4. Remember my estimate was about positive 2, right? It's actually 1.82. Okay, 1.82. And if we want to keep like five sig figs for future problems, we could put 1.8182. Okay, um, so there's our English score. What about Mandarin? So Mandarin would be Z equals X, which is 81, minus mu, which is 60, divided by 9. So that would be 21 divided by 9. And I think that might even be better. 21 divided by 9, 2.33 for 3 sig figs. If it was 5 sig figs, 2.3333. Okay, so that was Mandarin. And then let's do geography. Geography would be uh, x, which is 84, Emma score, minus the mean, 55, divided by 18. So that would be 84 minus 55. I'm not going to do that in my head. 29 divided by 18. So this is comparatively worse, right? It's 1.6111. or 1 .6111. OK. That was geography. So you can see that like geography is actually worse than English and Mandarin. Uh, what about biology? Let's do biology. So biology is uh, Z equals X, which is 68, minus 50, which is her mu, and then divided by 20. Uh, and so that would be uh, 18 divided by 20. Oh, this is one of the worst scores, isn't it? 18 divided by 20, that looks like it's like 0.9. 0 0.9. Okay, and last of all, math. Oh yeah, so this is Mandarin, and this is math. Okay, so for math, the x is 84, and the mean is 50, and the standard deviation is 15, so that would be 34 divided by 15, that sounds like a pretty good score. I think it's over 2, 2.27, or 2.2667. OK, so what is her best to worst subject? So math looks like it's, uh, oh, no. Mandarin is the best, right? So Mandarin, then math, because ma Mandarin is 2.33, and math is 2.27. What's the next one after that? Um, English is 1.8, so I think that's the next one. English is 1.82. Um, the next one is 1.61, which would be geography. And then last would be uh, biology, which would be uh, 0.9. All right, so you can kind of see using the z-score, um, like what does it really mean to get a 48 or an 84 or 68 in those classes? Like where is everybody else in the class? Um, are you a strong student in the class relative to your cohort? And so that's what the z-score would tell you, that the, the x-score does not tell you unless you draw a picture, right? 
Okay, number five. If z is the standard normal distribution, find the following probabilities using technology. In each case, sketch the region. So this is uh, pretty easy. It's kind of like what we did before, except now it's not going to be lined up on the standard uh, standard deviation lines. Okay, so the first one is going to be negative 0.86 to 0.32. I, you know, it's pretty easy to um, judge where to to draw these because now we the standard deviation is always plus or minus one so negative 0.86 would be about there and then 0.32 would be about there it would be like that so how do i find this with the calculator now this is like super easy right and if you if you reset the calculator remember the mean is going to be zero and the sigma is going to be one automatically but we're going to put negative 0.86. Remember, you have to put the negative sign and not the subtraction sign. And then 0.32 for the upper. And then we're going to put 0 and 1 for the sigma and the mu because it's a standard normal distribution. And I know it's a standard normal distribution because there's a z here instead of an x. Then I just enter twice. And the answer is 0.43. One. If I wanted to put five sig figs, I would put 0 0.43062, right? All right, how about uh, C? So C is probably that Z is less than 1.2. So if this is zero, 1.2 would be about here, right? So less than 1.2 would be this side of it. And so let's use the calculator to figure that out. Second distribution, norm CDF. And now all we need to do is put 1.2 for the right boundary, for the upper. And for the lower, we just put negative 1 E99, right? Negative 1 second E E99. And then the upper is going to be 1.2. And mu and sigma is going to be 0 and 1. We hit enter twice. 0.885 would be three sig figs, and five sig figs would be 88493. Okay, and let's do E, that Z is greater than 1.3. So in this case, we're going to use an infinity value. Again, the infinity value is going to be the upper this time. So 1.3, remember if this is 0 and this is 1, then 1.3 is about there. And in this case, we want greater then 1.3, so this will be 1.3, and we're going to mark the area that's above 1.3. So we're going to put negative 1e, no, we're going to put 1.3 for the lower, and we're going to put 1e99 for the upper. 0, 1, and then paste. And then my um, value is... 0 0.096801, and if it was three sig figs, I would just put 0 0.0968. Last one, z is greater than four, so that would be super tiny, right? Four is over here, super tiny, okay? Um, doesn't even appear. So we would do second distribution, norm CDF, four for the lower and then upper would be one e99 zero one and paste scientific notation right it's going to be um three point one seven times ten to the negative fifth would be one way we could write it the other way you could write it is point zero 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 four zeros three one seven super small okay i think that's it for this page